What's up, ACL Nation? Welcome into another episode of Bagging and Bragging, episode 38, K9 and Mish. Hot at you from the uh, draft table. We had a great time this last weekend in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We had uh, the showcase. We had the draft. We had open number one, singles, doubles, blind draw action, women's seniors, and I don't even know what else we had. And there's just a seniors, lot of stuff teams. packed in <laughs> three days. And that's before we got to media day, which was a whole nother you know, can of worms in itself. But I think all in all, everything was really, really fun. So we're going to do a little quick recap as far as the showcase goes. We're going to bring on Allison and Chase to discuss um, their stations that they had there. I believe it was Play the Block and Airmail Challenges. Myself, I had the push. Mishi had the deck around. And uh, before we get into that, though, Mishi, how you doing? Doing really good. It was uh, definitely a rough travel day yesterday because my flight was at 7 a.m. Eastern, which is 4 a.m. my time, which means I woke up at 1.30 in the morning, my time to get home, but got a nice a long night of sleep last night, feeling refreshed, ready to go. Yeah, I was uh, on the opposite end of that. Usually I fly out early, and then uh, I decided to book the nonstop flight, because if you have the option to go nonstop, then uh, that's the way to go. So we didn't fly out till 3 o'clock. Um, so we checked out the hotel at 11, decided to go get some breakfast at a nice little diner and uh, kind of talk about that in the bragging segment. Or I guess we can talk about it now if you want. So it was kind of cool because uh, I was going to brag on Corn for his uh, restaurant selections. Like it seems like he's always doing a good job. We can't brag on corn anymore. <laughs> oh, I got lots of corn stuff today. We're going to brag on corn. Anymore, so. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I was uh, pretty impressed with this little diner. It wasn't bad. We it was kind of weird, though, taking an Uber to like a little diner to get breakfast because we had all our suitcases and everything with us. Did you and like it, roll into the breakfast place with all of that? Yeah. And, he, <laughs> and, you know, if you know him, he had like his equipment, he had a suitcase, and then he had like another tote. So he had three totes. I had like the extra large suitcase because I carried. Hey, we're moving in. <laughs> yeah, we were getting all types of strange looks in the diner, but I mean, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. It wasn't really laid out for people to have luggages and suitcases, so we basically moved chairs out and like tucked our suitcases in the best that we could and made the most of it. But the food was really good. It was like called uh, eggs something. I'll, I'll think of it here in a little bit. Egg slide. I don't remember. Either way, really, really good food. And then what he picked for us the day before, that uh, that place was pretty good, too. Counter. It was called Counter. Counter. Yeah. yeah. It was very good. Yeah. So I'll also kind of piggyback off of that uh, Counter evening. He, he said that you got some mad skills in the arcade. Oh, you already knew that. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I was... I was letting it easy on you. Know you actually had skills. So next time we actually get to yeah, go, no way. Different. You cannot tell me that you didn't try to beat me at Mortal Kombat. I just am better. And I, Corey was trying to beat me at ski ball, but he couldn't. Sorry, sucks yeah, to ski suck. ball. You got me at ski ball too. So I guess I'll give you. See, that I got both of you at ski ball. Let's go. Uh, I have one sore calf because of the basketball game. I apparently only got off my tippy toes on one foot to make that shot. Uh, so I have a right sore calf muscle. And that's how pathetic I am that I got sore from playing the basketball game in an arcade. <laughs> so yeah. that's well, where you I'm at. My life. Injury before that, though, you had yeah. the ankle problem or whatever. Well, my foot. It's yeah, my it's, it's my left foot that's uh, still hurts. Still hurts. It's been I think what three or four weeks now. Um, so I don't know what's going on there if it's ever going to heal. So I'm definitely not bragging on my body, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I will brag on. Oh, um, the layout of the rookie showcase, we are going to talk about all the details of it, but I'm bragging on it because um, it was just really cool to get to meet all the rookies and see personalities. I was telling Corey, like, hey, we've got some like talkers, like I'm excited for interviews, <laughs> like we've got some personalities and some um, some fun things happening, uh, of obviously talent as well. So the rookie showcase to me was a, a game changer, I think, going forward, having this and now they know what to expect. So when new rookies come in, obviously, if they know anybody, they're going to be like, hey, here's kind of what to expect and how it's going to roll. I don't think there'll be as many surprises. Like we were we were all just trying to, you know, figure it out this this season. And I think it went really well. Um, yeah. We finished on time. Um, I think it really highlighted what people are skilled and, and where the holes are. And it also helped us connect with these players because most of them, I just didn't even know their names, let alone their faces. So being able to connect all that, uh, I thought it was just really, really cool. Yeah. I wish we could have actually had the captain as one of our guests or something like that to see if they use that data 
to influence mm. any of their picks. You know what I mean? Because I felt like for me, I don't know, I'll brag on myself for a second, Mish. I, I nailed the first round as far as my uh, yeah, content but... prediction goes. I had 14 out of 16 picks pretty much correct in the first round. I was the only one that had Frank Rohn and Brady Foster going the first round. They went there. Uh, the only two that I missed on, I believe, were Logan Hall and Pat Sim. And those two were two players that stood out for me in the showcase. So Pat Sim had a good weekend finishing second in seniors. I think we all kind of knew him um, either from seeing him play or because he shined in Myrtle Beach last year for us. Yeah. That's where, where he became our, on our radar. And then at Worlds, he basically backed it up and then qualified in the pro division. So if you didn't recognize him from those two, he definitely shined in the showcase, had a great weekend, ended up becoming a first round pick. The other one was Logan Hall. Logan Hall didn't come on my radar until Worlds. A lot of people were telling me to keep an eye. Hey, he's throwing the K9 unit Wizards. You know, keep an eye on Logan Hall. And uh, he had a strong showing going through the qualifier and then backed it up again on the showcase. But, yeah, I'll, I'll go right there with you, Mish. I think that the rookie class that's coming in is going to be a positive move in the right direction as far as personalities go. Um, one standout as far as personalities for me is Juwan Smith. I mean, yeah. kids right. I I love his personality. They're just always laughing, and I think it's going to help you with your interviews and stuff, having rookies like this. Absolutely, and that's interesting about Logan Hall because we were talking about on Around the ACL that Trey, Anthony, and I all did not know him prior to that. Um, so, so the fact that you at least heard his name and the fact that someone like shouted him out, like, watch this guy. You're the only one out of all of us. All the rest of us were like, who's this guy? Like, where did he come from? How have we not heard of him before? Um, so, I mean, really impressive from Logan and obviously it paid off. I don't know if Tony and, and Corey from the Cali Slingers knew him prior to the weekend, or if that was just based off of his performance at the rookie showcase and his numbers being, I think it was third overall, which we'll get more into detail in just a moment. Um, but if they didn't know him, then they they really are going off of numbers. And I don't think that's a bad thing because performing in that level at the showcase was with pressure. There's a lot of pressure on that, mm -hmm. just yeah. like there would be in a game. Yeah, I think with the captains watching too, a lot of the captains showed up. Not all of them. I was kind of surprised. Like this is yeah. a valuable time to even map out rounds, you know, six through ten. Even if they're not going to be picked in the first five rounds, right. you need to fill out a full team. And this was valuable information to go there and get these sleepers. So it, it was very beneficial for those that showed up. I think it showed on the draft sheets. And uh, if we do it again next year, highly recommend the captains to show up. I was surprised about that as well. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to bring Allison on because Chase is MIA. But maybe he'll pop on. We don't know. But we'll be back after this. All right, so we mentioned we're going to uh, talk about the Rookie Showcase in more detail. I thought it would be cool to bring on people that would, uh, were at other stations because we didn't ever leave our station, so we could only talk about what we saw in front of us. So uh, welcome, Allison, to the show. Hi. Hello. Hello. In the, same go ahead and, what was that? I said same stuff, different day. Yeah, right. Go ahead and tell everybody <laughs> which station uh, you were on. Bernie and I were on the airmail station. Okay. And then what, what did that consist of? So they had to throw eight sets of four from each side of the board. And we gave them one point. We put a bag in front of the hole. So they had something to airmail over. So they got three points for going in the hole. If they put it on, we gave, we gave them one point for that. Okay. So that's what you had. And then Wally, what did you have? I had the push station. Um, we, we both kind of did our stations differently. So we'll kind of get into it whenever I talk about my station, see if there's like a accidental advantage we gave the later groups before we gave the earlier groups. But my push station, we had a flat block in the level one position. Then we turned it to a diamond block in level one. Then we lowered it down the board, flat two, diamond two, flat three, diamond three. We eliminated level four because that just got to be too time consuming. Um, and the players had to throw from their arm over the board and their arm on the outside. So both sides, three levels. Yeah. And this is why our station went the quickest because we were deck around. So it was just <laughs> throw turn around. <laughs> so it went fairly quickly. It would get bottlenecked up some of the other uh, stations, but we still finished on time. So, I mean, I'm happy. 
happy with how it all went. Um, but we'll start with you, Allison. So who or who stood out to you or what do you want to talk about in terms of what you saw over on your station? Uh, so definitely Logan Hall that you guys were just talking about. He's in my conference and I had no idea who he was. So I was doing? talking. Yeah, I was talking to Jawan and I was like, hey, because I know him from our conference also. I was like, who are you playing with this year? And he was like, this guy right here, Logan Hall. I was like, oh, hey, sorry. So he would definitely stood out. Of course, Jawan, more personality than maybe anyone else in the pro division. He's always fun to talk to. Um, Faf, of course, he was great. Um, no, Pat, I don't think Pat misses their emails. Like, actually, I want to go look at the score right now because I like when he plays in tournaments. I'm like, does he ever miss? One, uh, PJ. PJ not. not PJ not. Yeah, he did really well. So Pat hit think- seventy out of ninety six on the inside and fifty six out of 96 on the outside. That's very interesting. That's quite a difference between inside and outside. That's how many emeralds they threw? 96 on each side? Yeah. Jeez. And then Brian Trader, he did really well. No, that's how many points. So remember, three points. So I, I, mean, oh, I don't okay. know what that math is. Yeah. Yeah. 12, 97, carry the something. <laughs> I don't know. Don't make me do math on the fly. It's not going to fly for me. Yeah, we started. <laughs> our first two that we had were Brayden and Ryan. And so we got going and we finally got to eight rounds and we were supposed to do 12. We were like, this is going to take all day. So we cut it down to eight and everyone else did eight throughout the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to have to tweak things, right? We're figuring it out. Absolutely. It was a yeah, learning we... process for everybody. We started off with a four rounds and I'm wondering if that maybe kind of wore down some of these lower are these scores lowered at the beginning because they were just getting exhausted. Like some of the players that came up, they're like, do I get a down and back? I'm like, nah, no time for down and backs. You're just going right into it. And it really kind of sucked because like the first station is a level one push. You know, that's, that's your first attempt. If I'm going to screw up, I want to screw up on the level three first. <laughs> but you know right. what I mean? Because the level one's oh, yeah, right there. Like not exact, yeah, if you're not exactly honed in, I'm wondering if that's something that we could have done to kind of help them out. But I also kind of wonder if we even should try and help them out. You know what I mean? Just put it up there. That's how it is. Everybody's got to go through the same process. So yeah. on my side, what I was doing is I had them go level one diamond with their arm over the board, level two flat diamond over the board, level three flat diamond over the board. Where Jake was on the other side, he was going level one inside arm, then switch over level one outside arm. Mm. So he was doing level one, level one. I was going one, two, three, one, two, three. Same arm. Yeah, it's our yeah. same side, I mean. Yeah, so I'm wondering if that helped or hurt some of these players by doing that. I don't know. But I do think that um, getting those extra tosses before you go back to that level one position probably helps some of my people in my score. Because, like, yeah, Frank Verona, ours- he didn't really shine. But whenever we took out that round four and we took off their scores because that was a whole lot of ones, they were missing the push, they were flying off the back. And once we eliminated yeah. that round four, it was like, holy crap, Frank Brown actually did really, really well, level one through three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and how nice. often are you going to try and push a level four? Well, yeah. that's that was kind of the conversation. I don't remember who said it, but they're like, this is unrealistic. I would never go for that shot. It's like, well, that's yeah. not the point. Like, the point is, do you have the skill? Not would you use it, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I think you know, could you pull it out? A lot of luck, no matter which way you're looking at it. If you hit it, I think it's more luck than anything. Well, you have like an Eric Davis who absolutely can hit it. You know what I mean? Like he has that skill set. So there, so we're not like trying to penalize you for not hitting it because most people won't. We're just seeing is there an Eric Davis amongst the bunch, right? Is there that person that can hit that crazy shot that? Nope, that has a super low percentage of success, <laughs> you know, and, and I think maybe the point systems will have to talk about, you know, our, our percentage, um, like, you know, for example, a, a airmail has the percentage of completion of this rate, but then like a level three block, the chances of six, six, of succeeding is this percentage and like our point system kind of following suit in that, if that makes sense. And I didn't look at the final scoring sheet, but um, maybe even like level four, this is your score instead of putting it all into one for the station, dividing it out between the different ones, which they could have done it like that. I'm not sure. 
No, it, it's it is one. It's just inside it outside. Um, yeah. Actually, push is all one score. You guys were inside outside. Is at least the way that I'm looking at it. I'm not even looking at it. <laughs> then with the deck around, one of the things that I brought up was that I was noticing that you know, like a Sammy Soto, a Caden Allen, a Logan Hall, their deck around, they always had a clean board. You know, so they scored 110 and above, but the people who didn't maybe have quite as strong of a score like a Braden Wilson was because the, he had to keep collecting. So I highlighted this, the cell every time they went for a collect and he had to go for chasing bags like four times in a deck around and the other guys had clean boards. So someone like a Jawan Smith really stood out to me because he had, I think, three or four times that he chased bags and he still got a 100 which is a 10 10 ppr right, right? so he's still right. challenging himself well he didn't keep Even the board clean situation. so you could look at it either way right because if you're doing a deck around you want the board clean that's the point you're trying to go in the hole so that means that any other bag is a miss so you could say he had a lot of misses but he was able to clean up his messes <laughs> so whereas <laughs> the other people right like they were having misses and they were not able to clean it all up and it was lowering their score. Uh, so that's kind of the way that I look at it is, you know, a Sammy Soto, a Caden Allen, a Logan Hall, um, and anyone that had a super high, let me, if I go to the deck around, anybody who had a super high deck around means they had really good accuracy. They were getting most of the bags in. They weren't hitting, they weren't missing right, left, short, long. They were almost always in the hole or right around the hole. Um, whereas the other people who weren't quite as accurate or consistent, they had to work a little harder to collect those points to get a higher score. Um, so that's kind of the, some of the things I was looking at in that uh, deck around station. Yeah, definitely notes to keep for next year. Now, did you guys notice any players having trouble with their bag selection? I did mention, I did some, somebody did mention to the boards were playing really fast for them, um, but most people said they were playing slow. Yeah, I, I was surprised that we still had some people going in there with a push station Throwing sticky side with really sticky bags. I'm like, yes, yeah, didn't adjust. Yeah, yes, you're comfortable, but like it took them two <laughs> or three rounds to turn it over and throw slick side only. I'm like, you had to know it was going to be harder to push through. And for the most part, we 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 started off again. We adjusted as we went through it with them pushing through their own bag. Yeah, and we we asked them sometimes, you want it on sticky side or slick side? How do you want us to set this up? And some people said it doesn't matter. Some people said slick. So if it didn't matter, we just put it back on the board. But, you know, there could have been some things that we did differently for more unison. But I was just kind of surprised that people didn't come up there with, like, a faster set of bags or maybe it's a different strategy in general for the push station because it, it definitely would, showed in their scores. You would think they definitely want the bag on the board slick side down. So the way that the push station was scored, um, the if the bag in, in your hand went in, but the bag that was on the board didn't go in, was it no points? It would count as four. So if you miss the board entirely and you threw that bag 90 feet, the bag on the board still counts as one. doesn't matter if you touch it. doesn't matter if you push it or nothing. still counts as one. Okay. Nobody nobody got a zero. Like, nobody tried to push it and knock both bags off the board. But, I mean, there were a lot of ones. So if the pushes <laughs> went flying off the back and that blocker stayed in place, um, you know, that they still got a point out of it, but it reflected on the score sheet. Okay, so yeah, so that means if they have the bag on the board, slick side, they throw their bag, and because it was on slick side, it went over the hole or around the hole or something like that. Yeah. They still got the bag in hand points, and then if it stayed on the board, it'd be an extra point. Yeah, it'd be basically a one, two, three, four, or six, basically. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I would, I just don't see any advantage to having it on the stick side then. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want that. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear a lot of conversation about like, hey, do you have a such and such bag? I'm about to go to the place, the block station, or I'm about to go to the push station. So like, I think people were trying to coordinate their bags with what they needed to do in that station. And with ours being airmail, they weren't worried about either yeah. any of that. <laughs> They're just trying to throw didn't it matter. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely didn't matter. Yeah. But really, really cool format. Like you said, a few tweaks here and there. I think overall we kind of, Hit, hit it on the nail on the head there in terms of uh, scoping out talent. Um, all right, cool. Well, Sad Chase couldn't join us, but Allison, appreciate you joining us. <laughs> um, 
we're going to uh, say goodbye to Allison for now, and then we'll take a quick break and come back with some more. But thanks so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. See yep. you. Thank you. All right, we'll be back right after this. So that was pretty cool. Like I said, I wish we would have had Chase. I, I like the perspective of the different stations. Like I didn't even know how you guys were scoring yours. So that was interesting yeah. to learn about. Um, but the next thing we want to kind of talk about is the draft and, and what kind of stood out to us in the draft. Uh, we were on the table. So it's kind of interesting. Like we're obviously involved a lot because we're at the table hosting it. But also I, I would like forget like it was like it was a blur. Like, wait, so what yeah. happened? <laughs> I had to like go back and look. <laughs> Yeah, it was jam packed. I asked Anthony yesterday when we did the ACL live show. Did you know that the picks got changed to one minute? Yes, I did. We didn't know that. Oh, I know. We were... I noticed the clock changed. Yeah, Corey was like, I had to take the clock off there because some of the captains were going off of my clock, and we're like, well, it's supposed to be two minutes. He's like, no, we changed it to one. I was like, well, nobody told us. <laughs> like, yeah. We're just up there thinking, that, man, everything's flying. You know. I don't think that anybody used the actual full clock though. Well, no, because they couldn't because whoever was backstage was on them. They're like, hey, you got to get your pick in 60 seconds or else. And But I think for the most part, the captains did, captains did do a good job of staying in their time frame. And, you know, we didn't have any issues like that. But, yeah, yeah I was yeah, I, I was I was kind of like nervous at first in case he couldn't tell me. So I, I messed up my opening line. I was so mad. Austin Cameron. I'll never forget <laughs> it, man. Because uh, on my script the entire time, every ran through that I did was perfect with Caden Allen, Austin Cameron, Caden Allen, Austin Cameron. And then I started talking when we went live, I said, Austin Cameron first. Then I started in my head picturing CA, CA. And I'm like, Cam Cameron. Cam <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. So in your practice, you said Caden Allen first. Then, yes. then, oh, that's why you got messed up because your brain <laughs> had it rehearsed and then you switched yeah. it and it went like, <laughs> like yep. wait, uh, what, what am I saying? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if the camera is even on me anymore after that point because I was kind of frustrated. And then I'm just like, there might be a moment at the beginning where you can see me just <laughs> shaking my head. Then I snap back into it. And I think the rest of the time I did pretty decent. But yes, yeah, you did. You did it, it was pretty hectic, man. I was uh, I was pretty excited though to get into it and actually get going once the pick started flying. I got a little bit more comfortable. But I got to tip my cap to you and Jeff. You guys are phenomenal. Um, you guys' pacing something to admire um <clears throat> anthony's preparation i was obviously the weakest link up there on the panel but that's all in all, true all in all we have a good squad no i think there's no weak link i think we're all just unique and i think that it comes together really nicely to have like the different dynamics together obviously i keep saying jeff's the glue that keeps us all together but um cool. you know without without him it would not have gone the way that it did uh, but i think that we each all bring you know a unique flair and I think yeah. it works and I like the dynamic, I, I, but Jeff is irreplaceable in my mind. <laughs> yeah. He's got yeah, a hard job. It was remarkable. We did our run through and we did our little team presentation and uh, he, he did his little speech, his 45 seconds on the ringers. And he's like, that's how that's done. A little tap, tap, looker. He's like, yeah, you guys are up. We're like, no, we're not <laughs> following that. He's He's also um, aware of his talents, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, but he went to school for broadcasting, right? I mean, that's not, that's yeah. This is what he's done his whole life. You know, I, I told, I looked at you and I said, I have media training, you know, this, it's not like this is a random, I just woke up and was like, I guess I'm good at this or whatever. Like, you know, like this is something I have experience in education. You know, I have, um, actual training in public speaking, media, live TV. I mean, these are things I've cultivated over the years. Um, so, so, and then you said it, it's confidence. You know, it's, yeah. I'm, I guess, you know, you know, Jeff's obviously confident in his skill because he's been doing it. And I have confidence in my skill because I've been doing it. This is totally new to you and you're still killing it, right? But it's still new. So like, you're not going to have the same confidence that you would if you've been doing it for years. Yeah, I'm actually going to watch it today. I haven't gone back sense. and watched it yet. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to give a quick shout out to Quinn Reeves and Heather Pierce. Thank you guys for sending me the inbox message and let me know how good I did. So I, Aww, I trust you guys. Yay. Thank you very much. It was a good confidence booster. So thank you. But yeah, yeah um, so actually getting into the draft, like I said, first round kind of pretty much went exactly as expected. We did our mock draft and we had players a little bit higher on our sheet than they actually got drafted. Some of the people that stood out for me, 
Um, ben Brown, Gabe Dolan, Mark Burgess, Maya Cup, some of those players, they went a little bit lower in the draft. Yeah. So it was kind of interesting to see what the captains were actually looking at compared to our sheet. So, and I felt like last year you guys were able to sway the captains of the tables a little bit more as far as picking players. This year, man, they weren't biting on us. They just. I, I don't think we were on the PA system last year either, were we? No, but they all had their phones out on their table. They were listening to, you know. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, I knew that. I know they were, but I'm just saying, like, you would think it would even weigh in more because we're over the whole room, mm -hmm. like, loudspeaker with everything we're saying. Like, it's, you know, afterwards, Corey from the Cali Slingo was just like, I was like, if you say Michael Nunez one more time, I swear I'm going to kill this girl because I kept saying, like, you know, a really good pickup. He wasn't here at the Rookie Showcase, but he's a yeah. Cali guy, and he's so super good and Corey's like shut up <laughs> stop <laughs> saying that someone's gonna grab them before us yeah you know because everybody could hear us yeah there's uh but. I think a little bit more of a demand we did it last year with the player interviews at the tables and stuff like that so full disclosure we had a game plan we were going to do a lot more interviews we actually had some graphics that we wanted to use to show how the whole team looked I know mm -hmm. Jeff went through the spreadsheet and described who's on what team Corey had some awesome graphics that we wanted to use. And within the first two picks, it got destroyed right away. Graphics went down. <laughs> the, I mean, the, the amount of trades, because he basically had every pick on the left-hand side, like on the graphic. So the, the graphics we showed yesterday on ACL Live, they have the player's name in the picture. And then there's yep. like a place to enter new ones. Well, whenever people started getting traded, those graphics on the left-hand side were gone. They were they were garbage. You can't use those anymore. And then who knows how many picks were over on the other side because one team had like nine picks before everybody else had their six. So, yeah, so we couldn't use like, those graphics. We needed a full-time graphic person that was just updating graphics because there's no way Corey could do that with the other things he was managing. It was impossible. Yeah, I think that's a job we could have gave Keck because um, he was actually the one entering in the names. And he yeah, actually had no all the trades right there. No reason to duplicate the work, yeah. Yeah, so I think we're going for we'll do that. And then definitely with the interview stations, we want to make sure we get more interviews next season. But, I mean, all in all, I think It just didn't feel like there was up. time, to be honest. Yeah, no. you know and I, I think mean? that's another thing with getting pushed back, too. Yeah. Yeah. But even yeah. And still, I just mean, like, within the draft, there was constantly something. There was no dead time. Like, I feel like last season when we did it, like it was almost like thing. There's like these moments where it's like, I guess we'll go to Anthony and the board, or I guess we'll go try to grab an interview. Like it felt like there was more lulls where we could kind of fill in some content, but this felt like go, 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 go. I don't know if it's because of like the four hosts or because I don't know why, but it just felt like there well, was never any downtime. I think one thing is we went from two minutes to one minute. So that was huge. Yeah. It takes away half the time right there. The other yeah. thing is we only did five rounds instead of, all the rounds that we did last year. True. So. Okay. Yeah. That's As a big, big picture, it felt like we had a lot more time to do stuff like that. And we also kind of skipped picks last year. So if we came back from a commercial break, we would, okay, we're coming back. We're going to have Michelle go to this table to do this interview. And you went back there, you did your interview. And then when we came back to the desk, we did a recap of the picks that we missed. Yeah. We didn't really do that this year. We pretty much stayed right on top of it for every single pick. So. Yeah, because we knew it was only five rounds. That's a valid point. Yeah. I do think that, I think you mentioned it before, it'd be cool if we could, you know, record or, or have this, the rookie showcase stream so people could watch it. Um, I don't know how to make that entertaining. Like, there, I guess it'd almost have to be like a host. <laughs> That's, I don't I was, really know. Like, I was you know, because Jeff was this. available. We had, yeah, we had, um, a talk at the bar last like after the draft and we all finally kind of took a second to breathe and we're like okay if we do this multiple camera setup you know how we do the nationals and you got four different courts you could select we could have each different station selected up there give like a printout schedule of who's going where at what time and then let people just choose what they want to watch or not watch stuff like that um but yeah i think definitely some type of host but, but, if, but if it was silent that would be so awkward like you almost need someone that's like talking to you yeah, but at the same time, the captains who didn't show up, they could have watched it from home. If they had a certain player they were interested in, want to do some research yeah. on, they could have True. gone back and they could have gone back and watched it after it was over. And yeah. then, you know, let's say that so and so's hubby was playing, she could have went in there and watched him play yeah. and focus on that. They don't, they don't need us talking over it. Like, what are we gonna, what are we gonna say anyway? That was a good amulet went in. 
Well, he missed that airmail. That airmail went in. Like, yeah, no, I not too much to talk I about. agree. I just feel like when you put out like content, if it's just like I know sometimes with the live streaming courts, like for example, if you have to walk away for a second and the game's just going, it's like if you're at home watching it, like you're, yeah, it's just quiet. I don't know how long you're gonna stick around, even if it's entertaining. It's entertaining watching good games, but when it's just quiet, it's like this awkward. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, yeah. It would, it would thing probably have like, to be Corey because Corey is the type of person that can multitask, update a spreadsheet, get us a graphic that looks really cool of like a leaderboard, and then kind of inform people that way. So I mean, yeah, and, like and Jeff, too. Jeff wasn't Jeff wasn't on a station; yeah. he was just there, right? Like Jeff could easily be kind of like hosting in a way, and then you could put Corey on production and put someone else at the deck around table. Like I think we could have, you know, definitely done something cohesive like this for next, like maybe next year because I think that'd be cool. To, and 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 if there was any way to kind of similarly, you could have the draft still going in a very like moderate way for the rest of the rounds. Like it's not a full production, but it's just kind of there if you wanted. Because I feel yeah. like with the NFL, we were, we were worried about his beauty sleep because we didn't work. She's gonna be no. I know he. Yeah, we were all spent. <laughs> no, I totally agree. Um, and, and I think we'll look in that to that next season for sure. But you know, I feel like with the NFL, like when the draft starts, it's like this whole thing. And then like, as the rounds do like, as the days go on, I feel like it's, it's just kind of background stuff. Like it, people aren't necessarily there. It's on, but they're not like fully attentive on it. Yep. So I think it could work similarly. And by the way, it doesn't have to all be in one day. No. Yeah. I think, uh, I think combining it on a day that we did a tournament was rough. I'll talk about that a yes. little bit later. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> Agreed. Spoil nothing, but yeah, <laughs> it, it was definitely rough for me. I think Friday ended up being a 17 hour day for me. So long. Saturday was a 14 hour day. And then there was no stream on Sunday. We weren't scheduled to a stream. We were doing inventory and that drug out longer than we thought. Yeah. That ended up turning into like another 12 hour day. So it was a very long weekend. For sure. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and like on media day, I did the morning block of interviews and I was thinking, and I went back to the hotel room and I had every intention to go back. And I was so spent that I was like, I'm technically not on the calendar. Like I got, I, I'm done. I'm done. I've got to tap out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's take a quick break and watch highlights uh, right after this. been a while but we have highlights thank you open number one we're gonna go through singles right now and then we'll have doubles next week wally yeah we should have doubles next week it's on the uh tricaster which is back at hq i appreciate jake brandon filling in and giving you guys some great commentary um for the doubles action while we were all getting ready for the draft so shout out to jake, hey, jake. um i did forget to train him though on how to record the replays at the end of the video so that way we, i can go back in and find them easily um, and then I went in and recorded them to the hard drive so I would have it. Um, but then file became corrupt. So oh, of course. couldn't, couldn't get it. Um, but yeah, right. I have no idea what we have on these highlights. We're just going to kind of watch them on the fly because as I mentioned, I have a late, had a late flight. So flying out at three o'clock as opposed to flying out at eight o'clock, you don't realize how valuable your hours are until you don't have them. So. Until they're gone. And I, uh, <laughs> We'll either throw, sh we'll either show doubles next week, or the week after. I'll be in Cabo yeah. next week, so I won't be around. Um, so we're figuring that out, but we'll get doubles to you next. But all right, let's get them up there, Wally. All righty. Um, well, let's let's go ahead. And I think we started with women's. Um, <laughs> so close. Oh, that's painful. Poor Sam. Yeah, so I think we're starting the off the same way that we did last time. Sam and Cheyenne, two strong yeah. women contenders right off the bat. Um, Shocking. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, juniors, women's, and seniors kind of went by the script, right? These ladies put on an airmail show. That was only two. I believe at that time they hit five in a row. Wow. As you can see, Cheyenne was not afraid to throw her airmail. I talked to Jeremy Frazier about uh, how they played doubles. I believe they made it to the finals in their bracket, and he said Cheyenne is just ridiculous with her airmail right now. So Good. I don't know if that's something we're yeah. going to see. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some awkward knuckles if it's Damon Dennis. There, yep, there it is. I, I had no <laughs> idea that that was happening. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, again, Pat Sim, not afraid to throw the air mills. Damon Dennis right there with him. Um, but yeah, good, good showing for the basically expected people to win. Jacob Gore took down the juniors division. Cheyenne took down women's, and Damon Dennis took down seniors. Yeah, no shocking things there. Well, actually, no shock, except for, I guess, Alan Rawls, which we shouldn't say is shocking 
it's a weird conundrum. I don't know how to explain it. Okay, good. I did get all these Tony Smith rolls because these were ridiculous. He was basically coin slotting 2.0, 3.0 again. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Philip Lopez Jr. throwing the Titan bags. He looked like he was locked in with those things. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing a strong version of Philip. Look at that one. God, Jesus, Nothing Tony. there. <laughs> He's he crazy. Like, and what? He's collecting. And he's collecting at the same time. It's mind-blowing. Yep. Got my guy out here, Rye Guy, Ryan Trader, rocking the K9 jersey, throwing very, very well. Really well. Ended up taking down a bracket. Um, lost. Very <laughs> unfortunate. I mean, how close can you get? I know. Taking down a bracket. Lost to Ryan Wiedenfeld. So proud of those two guys. But I'm excited, cool. Mish, man. The season has started, and pretty much everything I was looking forward to watching happened. Yeah. No, it's it's strong. Five bags in one shot there from Gavin. They're, they're, the pros are putting on a show. Yeah, and I was going back through, you know how I usually go through, and I watch all the matchups, and then I put down who's playing against who, and then on the ACL Digital Network, I title it with or in the description with those players. Right. There's some awkward knuckles for us again before the match starts. Um, but, yeah, so I was basically going through it, and I was like, man, I want to watch this match. Man, I want to watch this match. I want to watch this one. <laughs> and there's there too so many, many good ones. Yeah, there were so many good ones in the loser's bracket. I believe at one point on our live feed, we showed Kayla Batson taking on Mark Richards in the loser's bracket, and we're like, you know, there's just so much this season. Just I want to say like three years ago, we had 256 pros. I'd probably say 180 of them deserve to be pro. You know what I mean? Like some of them yeah, either yeah. qualified via points or some other conference standings or stuff like that. It was kind of given Aiden phenomenal weekend for Aiden. Also Aiden did phenomenal. Yeah. He, he, he's a standout for sure. Yeah. Big was it big perm or little perm. What are they call? I don't know which perm, but it's a perm. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he has a perm actually, but that's the name on his shirt. Yeah. Pretty sure it's his natural hair, but uh, yeah. who knows? Yeah. Hunter Thorns, Air Mills were on point. RIP to his ankle, though. Not sure if you saw that. I did. What's that's yeah. crazy. Who's got, got, what is he going to play Parks on crutches? Yeah. Is that or the scooter? That's going to be interesting. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. So right now, I think out of the 250 pros that we have, I would probably say 225 of them deserve to be there. So the talent level has increased significantly. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, that's a great shot by Wiedenfeld. I expect big things. I think I heard um, Anthony or somebody talking about Wiedenfeld. I'm like, man, he is. he seems to be locked in right now. His pushes, he, he lives for moments like these. Where he can just go low into the pile and get the bar so just didn't get lucky enough right there on that one to drip back in. I not believe they didn't fall. Yeah. I want to give a shout I out to it. Rule. Phenomenal showing for him this weekend. He's yeah. Off hot at the national in Corpus Christi last season. Kind of fell off a little bit at the end. But if uh, this is what we get from Justin Rule rocking the AAR jersey and the AAR bags full time this year, um, I I'm excited for it. <laughs> That's <Man>. nasty. <laughs> so good. Oh. Here he is, the winner. You can't see it from this angle, folks, but Alan Rawls bag is starting to get flatter. And that's kind of scary because we we uh, thought the advantage was the saw blade. He couldn't do so many things, but if his airmail is that accurate and his bag is flat, uh, Alan Rawls is going to be dangerous. I, I expect to Alex, see him in your guys' top 10. Alex but, Rawls, his brother said if the bag is flat, then it's not a good thing. Like it needs to be in that sort of, you know, what do they call it? Saw blade type of. No, nah, he's Actually. fixed it though. He is he's accurate. I think his stats showed every match was over a nine plus PPR. So this was a this was a great battle between these two. The highlight after highlight went two games. <laughs> the the scorekeeping. <laughs> oh, they love that turn. What'd you say it you was? You gotta put it in some Backstreet Boys music or something. Yes. <laughs> But man, Kyle Malone and Ryan Trader put on a show. Both matches going down to the wire. Ultimately, Ryan Trader able to pull it off. This was a nice little sequence here. These are three replays back to back to back where airmail collects are just easy for these two. And there's not even that much hole there. No. And then Ryan goes short to collect this one, able to get all of it to go, plus four. Nicely done. These kids, I'm telling you. Oh, beautiful oh, bar, bar soap. soap. So many bar soaps. Bar soaps like the new, I don't know, roll. Push? It's, a new, it's a new roll, I guess. Yeah, it's <laughs> I don't really way know too often. 
they're just hitting it like with an accuracy the the accuracy of it is so good that's the word i couldn't think of earlier when i was trying to come up with a different percentage so like what is this word i can't think of accuracy that was coin spot s yeah oh my goodness just sticks in the back of the hole and then no worries ryan will clean up all yeah, i'll clean it up i got you how many shots in just this little replay segment that we have have we seen look at that it's nasty the, the logo in the upper right-hand corner makes it look like it went off the back. But uh, how many times have we seen them push in five bags on these replays? Yeah, like it's just no big deal. Yeah, and then here's the... It. I had to go back in and grab this one because we got a bar of soap. And then Wienfeld's next attempt was going for the and one. And he came real close to hitting it. Oh, <laughs> taps it. So I was like, oh, man, he almost got that and one. And then the very next round... He's like, I'll get this one. No worries. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, good stuff there, everybody. All right. One more break. We'll come back with our game right after this. All right, Wally, it's time for the top floor bagger and four bagger of the week. What you got for your four bagger? Uh, top four bagger. I think I'm probably going to steal yours. We didn't uh, get together and figure out. Who's got this? But my top four bagger is amazing job by everybody on the draft. Oh um, yeah. Did you go a different direction? Oh yeah, I went a different direction. All right, cool. Then we're not we're not uh, piggybacking, but yeah, shout out to Corey, Chase, Jeff, Anthony, Mish. You guys all killed it. Everything was amazing. Um, I think that the segments that we had just were home runs. I think uh, the graphics and transitions and everything went really really cool. It was a good experience for me to get some TV time. And I think everyone behind the scenes, um, even to Stephanie for the, I can never say, it's a charcuterie board. Charcuterie. Right? Charcuterie board. That was amazing. All the players love that. And I think it's just overall good setup. And the crowd. Thank you very much for the crowd for showing up. Otherwise, it's been kind of lame. Showing up and staying, too. Yep. yep. Like, you guys are awesome. Um, my four bagger was the Virginia cutters getting the first two picks and grabbing Jake Gore and Sammy Soto. <laughs> That's a pretty good one, two punch right there. I think that that is a great way to set up your team for success. So I really like them getting those first two picks to get a better chance of, uh, of competing this season. Well, see, I like the All two right. picks. I think those are two of the strongest people they could have gotten. I'm just wondering if they could have gotten more of a return on their investment by trading away both the first and the second pick to getting more of a full squad. You know what I mean? If they could have filled out like, like the Las Vegas high rollers, they traded away their early picks and they filled out an entire roster. I'm wondering what the cutters could have done yeah. with the first and second, but overall, yes, great picks. So the floor bagger, what you got? Floor bagger for me was a schedule. It's too much. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to eliminate blind draw, like cut the blind draw out, move singles back to Sunday, um, do the showcase and the draft at the same time. Maybe even do rounders for doubles uh, Friday night and then doubles Saturday morning or something. I don't know. It was just way yeah, too we'll, much. We'll fix it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I didn't have time to set up the pipe and drape. And then whenever I asked for help, the people I asked, they said, yeah, we'll be there. They forgot. And then the next time it became in my memory or my forefront of my mind is whenever you're like, how come there's no pipe and drape? It looks terrible. This is garbage. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Sore spot. All right. My floor yeah. bagger was sleeping on the ladies in the draft. I mean, there is there is really good, strong, competitive women, and they go really late in the draft, and I don't understand. To me, it doesn't make any sense. Um, they they should be they should be a hotter commodity. Um, but yeah, happened last season too. So it's always gonna happen. I think one main reason that it does happen is whenever you look at partners and you're trying to get like pro partners lined up with each other the ladies pretty much stick with the ladies so if you don't have one it's hard for you to get another one now there's a lot more mixing of co-ed teams um this season so hopefully that does change going forward but i can definitely understand where it's kind of a question mark obviously whenever the ladies are playing um it's a friday early most of these other captains and players and stuff like that aren't here yet at that point so, I mean, I can definitely see, understand how they get overlooked, but yes, we definitely need to stop sleeping on them. But I mean, like, if you look at their stats, like, there's so many that throw over a 10. So it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. Anyways, all right, send it or board it. All right. So, this might not go with the spirit of send it or board it, but um, no, it, it is, 
Uh, you know how I roll with this, Mish. This is the hardest one for me. <laughs> um, but I want to know if you're going to send it or board it for each of the seasons. Because for me, I love the fall. I hate any time the weather changes, though. My allergies go crazy. I'm sending it for the fall, boarding it for the winter, boarding it for the spring, sending it for the summer. Sending it for the fall, sending it for the winter, sending it for spring, boarding it for summer. Get out of here, summer. I want nothing to do with you. Yeah, you can tell which uh, region of the country we're in based off of those selections. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, send it or board it. If you notice something that you don't like, Wally, like maybe a rule break, do you post it on, on Addicted to Cornhole and complain? Send it or board it. <laughs> Is that how you deal with it? Um, If you get paid for post reactions, I guess you send it because... <laughs> I mean, the, the Jackson Gore handled it very well if this is the one you're talking about. <laughs> so, yes, uh, to give people an idea, stepping over the line, that's one thing I was going to ask Allison, is if you notice the violations happening during the showcase, I was keeping a close eye on it. One person in particular was Ryan Trader. Last year, stepped over the line pretty much every single time. This year, making a conscious effort to keep one foot down. That being said, there's going to be plenty of moments where it happens, and it doesn't affect the game at all. So whenever Jackson Gore did it, stepping over the line didn't affect the game at all. That's the picture that gets posted on Facebook. You're not doing it to draw attention to the rule. And the way you worded the question is kind of douche s. So, yes, I'm boarding it this with their post. <laughs> okay, would you rather? All right, would you rather? Okay, so since there has been some conspiracy in posts about some players not giving it, they're all on teams and stuff like mm -hmm. that, I would go ahead and ask you what you would prefer as far as format goes so would you rather play a round limited format with a team environment or would you just rather stick only to uh 21 and done and just not play teams period no i think it's i think the the more dynamics and differences and things the more you grow and, and have fun it's different strategies it's it's different dynamics i think it's all good i think change is good i welcome it yeah, I'm the same. I like to take it. I like to play them all. I want to I have some fun and experience yeah. different things. Totally. Uh, my would you rather, would you rather get the first two picks in the draft or have a top 30 player from last season? Hmm. Uh, there, I'm going for the two for one. So if you're only giving me one top 30 from last season, I mean, because in this particular situation, they got a top, was it five or top 10, whatever Jake Gore was. Yeah, but so but wasn't that how the trade went? Didn't they trade their that pick for? So you so sorry. Let me word it differently. You already have a pick, so you're just trading a pick for a top thirty player. Like not yeah. you're not trading two for one. You already had one. Yeah, I mean, I would probably. So you're getting a so you can either choose from getting a second first round pick or a top thirty player from last season. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'd probably go ahead and keep the top thirty based on how the team was laid out because. Was it five rounds at 16? That's 80 players already gone. So your your first pick has got to be better than the top 80, which obviously it was with these particular situations. But it um, doesn't always work out that way. I would rather have the talent from last year that I saw how they get to execute. Yeah, that's fair. All right, that's it. We got through it. So uh, we appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, we're still figuring out next week, but we'll keep you posted, and uh, we'll talk to you as soon as we can. Thanks, guys.